This is Susan Wilbanks with BlendedInsight.com. I am a holistic and integrative healing arts practitioner, an intuitive, and an energy healer. In this podcast, I share tips, tools, and suggestions that have helped me along my path in hopes of inspiring and helping you along yours. Let's get started with today's podcast topic. Hello, bright soul. Thank you so much for joining me on another podcast. I have my diffuser going. I've got some lavender in there, some lavender oil and some orange oil. It smells so good. And I'm overlooking the mountains. It's a windy day, but it's so breathtakingly beautiful. And I'm super grateful that you have chosen to join me here for this important talk about building your self-esteem. And we can always get a little bit better with this, especially those of us who are healing. Eh, I was going to say healing others, but I will say empathic. And I know everyone thinks they're an empath these days. And a lot of it is a trauma response. People don't realize that. They think it's, oh, I'm just so gifted. I'm empathic. But a lot of times it's a trauma response. And the reason why I say that is because when you are exposed to toxic environments or traumatic environments, which I mean, most of us were, you learn to read the room. So you learn how to adjust yourself to the feelings and behaviors of others for survival. And then you become so hyper aware, you start to flow with it even as an adult, because it was the survival skill you learned early on. So when people say that, you know, it could be a gift, Oftentimes it's survival, but either way you have it and you can use it to serve you. But a lot of times when we are that way, we feel different, although we're really not that different. Just most people don't talk about it and we feel isolated and we feel frustrated, especially if you're taking on other people's things all the time. And the codependent cycle is when you get so enmeshed in other people's needs that you can't distinguish their needs from your own and you then can't decide what's yours, what's someone else's. And there's just this weird merging where you get exhausted. And so one of the ways that I, over the years, healed this in myself is, first of all, mindfulness practices helped a lot and separating who I really am from the opinions of other people. So you know, just people are just responding from their own lens. So regardless of what happened to you growing up, what did or did not happen, you have the power and the capacity to control what your outlook is on that situation and what conclusions you draw from what happened to you. And so for me, I just started to understand that people behave from their own lens, their own trauma, their own wounding, and I didn't want to repeat that pattern. So I started really looking at myself and focusing on areas that I needed to improve upon and then keeping those promises to myself. So one of the re- easiest ways to build self-esteem is keep the promises you make to yourself. So if you make a commitment to do something, do it. Keep your promises because that's where the first tr- the first um, step of trust is broken is when we don't keep our promises to ourselves. So And then what I was doing is, so I would make a commitment to, I'm just making this up, get up at a certain time. So when the alarm goes off, I'm getting up at that time. I made a commitment to myself and I make it easy. So lay all my clothes out, get everything organized, blocking time off for myself, meeting my own needs and being very kind with myself for how far I've come because the drill sergeant mentality doesn't always work. And what I mean by that is beating yourself up. And sometimes you need that. Sometimes people get lazy and that's the only way to get through. You you know yourself and spirit knows you. Your higher self knows you better than anyone else. So it's determining what you really need and then nurturing that part of yourself and then celebrating your successes along the way as you make those small steps. Give yourself credit for making those small steps. So I don't even care if it's... Today, you just say, you know what, I'm really tired and I'd like to take a bath tonight. Take the bath. And then when you take the bath, give yourself credit for meeting that need and taking good care of yourself. Maybe it's, I'm hungry and I want to get something to eat. Getting yourself something to eat. Look how how well you just took care of yourself. And nurturing and honoring your own effort, your own self, your own journey really can help. And it also, as you build trust in yourself being a dependable person for yourself, that also grows your confidence. And the more your confidence grows, the more your self-esteem grows. 
you know, obstacles, we all face obstacles. They're only there to get us to the next level. Everything in life is how you respond. It's things are going to happen. You can't control it, but you can always focus on how you respond. And there's always a purpose to the pain we endure, the things we endure. It's what are we, what are we choosing to do with it? Because no one that's done great, inspiring things comes from an easy past. I haven't met a single one. We don't get inspired by people who just have everything handed to them and they have no obstacles. We're inspired by people that overcome tremendous amounts of things and they come across, come on the other side and they share with us, if I can do it, you can too. And they come out a better person and we're, we're thinking, wow, I mean, they struggled and they got over it. There's lessons in the struggle. And I remember listening to, um, it was, I liked T.D. Jakes and I was listening to him talk about how people look at his end where he is now and they want that not realizing the struggle he went to to get there the times when he couldn't feed his family which is a huge blow to self-esteem when you can't care for people that you're responsible for and if you if you get things too soon then it's not it's actually can be crippling because you don't know how to do it and he used the analogy of if you give a 16 year old a car without any lessons on driving, or maybe you give it to them too soon when they're 12 years old, they're not ready for it. They could wreck it. There's all these kinds of things like they could hurt themselves. They could hurt other people. There's all these things that happen. There is a process that we go through, a process of development. And then when we get to the piece where we're actually ready for it, it's that much more rewarding and we can handle it. And sometimes we can't handle what we want. We want it, but we're not ready for it. So everything's in divine timing and everything happens perfectly to develop you into the person that you're supposed to be, that your soul came in here incarnated to be. And when you have that level of trust too, you can just say, okay, let me start small and, you know, surround yourself with things that make you feel good. Life is hard, yes, but again, how are you talking to yourself? So you don't have to believe what every, everybody says about you. If people have said ugly things about you. Oh, I heard Dr. Wayne Dyer a long time ago. His daughter was telling him such and such called her this name, and she was really upset about it. And he was like, well, if they called you a tree, if this person called you a tree, would it upset you? And she said, no, I know I'm not a tree. And he was essentially using the example of, well, if you're not those things, then why is it upsetting you? We can't allow other people to bring us down or take us off our path because you're precious. You came here for a very divine reason. Start working on keeping promises to yourself, no matter how small, and then celebrate those and build on that. And that's all I wanted to say. And we're going to go into a healing so you can uncross your arms and legs, focus on your breathing.
Okay, and so it is. Friends, I hope you have an amazing week. Take really good care of yourself, and we will talk next week. Take care. Bye-bye.